Upward electrical discharges from thunderstorms can take on many different forms and characteristics. They are primarily classified by the altitude they terminate in the atmosphere, ranging from brief pulses of light that are confined to the altitudes near cloud tops, called pixies, to blue diffuse cones of light that reach approximately 40 km altitude, known as blue jets, to large tree-like structures that reach to the lower ionosphere, called gigantic jets. These phenomena are part of a larger family of upper atmospheric electrical discharges known as transient luminous events, or TLEs. Of these, the gigantic jets are exceedingly rare and the most spectacular, as they directly couple the lower and upper atmosphere and are capable of large charge transfers between these regions. Normal lightning can transfer around the order of tens of coulombs of charge back to the Earth. By comparison, the largest recorded gigantic jet transferred an incredible 300 coulombs of charge into the ionosphere. Scientists are still unravelling the mysteries surrounding their formation, making each sighting a unique glimpse into the secrets of the Earth's atmospheric phenomena. Let's dive in and find out more. Gigantic jet lightning, although a natural phenomenon, remained largely unknown until relatively recently in the scientific timeline. The discovery of these spectacular events can be attributed to advancements in technology and more specifically the development of high-speed cameras and improved observational techniques. It was not until the late 20th century, with the proliferation of global lightning detection networks and the utilisation of high-speed cameras on aircraft and satellites, that scientists and researchers began to capture and document gigantic jet lightning. The first recorded observation is often attributed to a serendipitous event in 1994 when a researcher, during a high-altitude aircraft study of thunderstorms, accidentally captured the elusive blue jet on film. Subsequent advancements in observational technology, including the use of specialised high-speed cameras and satellite instruments, have allowed scientists to study and document these phenomena more systematically. The rarity of gigantic jet lightning and the challenges associated with capturing them in action make each observation a valuable piece of the puzzle, contributing to our understanding of atmospheric electricity and lightning processes. Gigantic jet lightning and other atmospheric phenomena, like sprites, often occur in conjunction with each other. Both gigantic jet lightning and sprites are transient luminous events that happen in the upper regions of the Earth's atmosphere above thunderstorms. While they share some similarities, they are distinct phenomena with different characteristics. Gigantic jet lightning and sprites are often associated with intense thunderstorms and the electrical activity occurring within these storms. Here's a brief overview of each phenomena. Gigantic jet lightning originates from the tops of thunderstorm clouds and extends vertically into the upper atmosphere, reaching the ionosphere. The discharge typically appears as a blue or violet column of light extending upwards from the thundercloud, and it can be quite extensive, reaching several tens of kilometres in height. Gigantic jet lightning events are relatively short-lived, lasting a fraction of a second. Sprites occur above thunderstorms and are positioned higher in the atmosphere than gigantic jet lightning, reaching into the mesosphere. Sprites often manifest as large red jellyfish-like structures with tendrils extending downwards. They can cover a broad area horizontally and are generally more diffuse compared to the focus column of gigantic jet lightning. Sprites also have a short duration, typically lasting a few milliseconds. While both gigantic jet lightning and sprites are linked to thunderstorm activity and the associated electrical processes, they are distinct in their characteristics and locations within the atmosphere. The simultaneous occurrence of these phenomena suggests a complex interplay of factors related to the electric field and charged particles present in and around thunderstorms. The study of these events contributes to a deeper understanding of Earth's atmospheric electricity and the interconnected processes occurring in the different layers of the atmosphere. Most gigantic jets have been observed to emanate from maritime tropical environments, typically over the ocean at low latitudes during hurricane season when ocean surface temperatures are warm. The parent thunderstorm usually has tall tops between 15 to 18 kilometers high, often overshooting the troposphere. The discharges commonly emerge from the convective core of the thunderstorm that is associated with the coldest cloud tops. Cloud top turbulence conditions are thought to be a necessary prerequisite for gigantic jet production, as this weakens the upper positive charge by mixing with the upper negative screening charge layer, 
inducing a charge imbalance in the thunderstorm allowing the discharge to escape outwards. The most common type of thunderstorm has the main positive charge region situated above the main negative charge region, often with a smaller lower level positive charge region, known as a tripolar charge configuration. Based on past observations, gigantic jet charge structure feature a narrow, truncated upper positive charge region over a larger, wider middle negative charge region. This is brought on by strong convection within the upper part of the cloud. The charge structure is thought to produce an escape negative leader that propagates vertically above the cloud and also creates a charge imbalance between the charged regions. Similar to ordinary lightning, gigantic jets are plasmas consisting of both leaders and streamers. Lightning leaders are hot, highly conducted channels that excite nitrogen and oxygen. Streamers are filamentary, weakly ionized channels that are relatively cool and produce optical emissions coming from molecular nitrogen. Streamers appear blue below about 50 km altitude. Ordinary lightning has streamer zones that are located at the tips of propagating leaders with leader channels forming the bulk structure of the discharge. Gigantic jets have a discharge that begins in the cloud as an ordinary leader that escapes the upper cloud region and appears as a few well-defined channels moving at high speed similar to those of lightning leaders. At around an altitude of 35 to 50 kilometers, the shape of the upward propagation changes to a more fan cone-shaped structure. Some have speculated that at this altitude the discharge now transitions from a leader channel to a streamer-only mode of propagation. High-speed images of gigantic jets reveals a bidirectional propagation with at least one luminous step at the altitudes of 23 to 40 kilometers before a continuous acceleration to the ionosphere. As the streamer progresses upward, a noticeable change in color occurs. At lower altitudes, a characteristic blue glow is visible but as the jet reaches higher up, it changes into a reddish color. In order to understand why this occurs, it is important to understand that there are several factors at play. Emissions of light in these cases is caused by the excitation of electrons in specific orbits of an atom, where each orbit corresponds to a specific energy level. When this electron then falls back to its ground state, it will emit a photon of light. Each atom has a specific set of emissions it can make, depending on the transitions that the electron makes when it falls back to its ground state. Shorter wavelengths, like blue light, correspond to higher energy photons, so the transition from blue to red involves a change in the energy level of the emitted light. At higher altitudes where there are fewer particles due to lower atmospheric pressure, collisions are less frequent. The scarcity of particles affects the number of collisions rather than the energy of the transition. Our atmosphere is composed of primarily nitrogen. If we look at the nitrogen emission spectra, we can see that it can produce both blue and red colour under different conditions. Blue is primarily associated with ionised nitrogen atoms and red with nitrogen molecules. So, at lower altitudes, the energy of the discharge is sufficient to rip nitrogen molecules apart, creating ions, and then a subsequent collision causes an excitation in the ion and emits the blue coloured light when the electron falls back to ground state. As the discharge transitions from a leader to a streamer, the energy is dissipated across a much larger volume of space, as it hunts for more charges. At the same time, as we rise in altitude, the pressure decreases, and therefore there are fewer nitrogen atoms for the charges to collide with, meaning there will be a decrease in the rate that collisions occur. Now we start to see a predominance of excitation of nitrogen molecules and hence the red colour. Another important point to consider is how a discharge changes with decreasing pressure. Most laboratory experiments are conducted at a specific pressure, but here we are dealing with a slowly changing pressure. Atmospheric pressure is about a thousand millibars, but reduces quickly as we ascend in altitude. If we examine these images from experiments conducted at various pressures, we can see the very different characteristics of a discharge at low pressure compared to one at high pressure. As I've discussed previously, we must also consider that this discharge is bidirectional and the behavior of the positive and the negative ends are very different. Once the gigantic jet reaches the ionosphere, the mid-level positive leader network expands horizontally inside the extensive negative charge layer for more than a second, thereby producing the incredible charge transfer associated with the event. 
if the positive leader network was not able to expand sufficiently after the negative leader escaped the cloud, it would have appeared as just a negative starter, reaching only a few kilometers above the cloud top. It is therefore important for the cloud to build a large negative layer. Most observations show that during this build-up phase, there are no cloud-to-ground strikes, allowing the charge to build up. In many cases, once the gigantic jet has formed, cloud-to-ground lightning tends to resume after a few minutes. Observations have shown that often there is initial fast development of the full extent of the jet, a trailing jet topped by a brighter, longer-lasting and slower rise transition zone, and in some cases a final rebrightening of the jet. Back in 2010, they managed to capture the first ever positive gigantic jet. The redistribution of charge in the upper atmosphere have been shown to alter the ionospheric conductivity after the formation of gigantic jets. This underlines the complex electrical nature of our planet and the atmosphere. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.